uh, that's that's a little sea creature, worm-like creature in the Cretaceous. And uh, we believe this is part of the Austin chalk, by the way, mm -hmm. the worldwide layering system. Now, uh, this is incredibly important because Professor Clark is a world-class fluid hydrologist, and he works in cementation and how long it would take for that layer to form. Now, that fossil has four inches of vertical structure, and then he bends and goes inward. We do not how, know how far inward, but the bulk of his body was inward for him to be able to bend and try to get out of this. Now, according to evolutionary scenario, every inch of this layer, because it has a lot of clams in it, it has a lot of disassociated clam shells, but basically clam shells that have been moved by water and are still intact. Mm -hmm. They were buried alive. It took from 2,000 to 2 million years. Now, let me say that again, according to standard interpretation, 26,000 to 2 million years for each inch to form in this sedimentary deposit. Mm -hmm naturally by evolutionary processes. Well, now, wait a minute. This is an incredible discovery. Uh, we, this is, at this point, you can see, this is 11 inches thick. Now, let's figure that out, mathematician. If it took 26,000 times 11, how long did it take? It's it, million uh, or, or no, over 200,000 <laughs> 200, years. But if it took 2 million mm -hmm. years, as some geologists indicate, 2 million years by natural formation 11, you've got 22 million years in this formation. Now, wait a minute. This fossil is right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. There are clams and other forms, the Lacinoides tracks, in this. He was trying to get out. We call him Mighty Worm because... <laughs> Four inches of time, if we use 26,000 times four, mm -hmm. you get less than 100,000. If you use two million times four, he had to remain there eight million years. Give or take. Give or take. <laughs> in place we call him Mighty Worm. That's yep. absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Meaning this discovery has major import and major impact. Mm -hmm. So we have a world-class scholar here observing that and verifying it. Now, you said that covered through vertically about four inches of rock, yes. correct? These are a display from, an in display in the Royal Terrell Museum in Alberta. This is from the Burgess Shale. And again, multiple fossil worms were found burying vertically through the layers in the Burgess Shale. Even the pressure lines as they work through it have been found. That is marvelous. Now, with only moments remaining, let's spend a moment here on this ammonite, and then I want to announce a discovery. On the last program, you presented to me what I've been for years trying to find, and that is some ammonites with the siphuncles in place. That siphuncle is, of course, like a blood vessel, but it was incredibly sophisticated. In that, as you explained in the last program, that permitted uh, some time water by the uh, intelligent uh, thought process of the creature, water to fill these chambers or air to fill these chambers, depending on whether this ammonite wanted to be more buoyant, to go closer to the surface, or to be less buoyant and as a living submarine to go near the bottom of the water reservoir he was in. These are incredibly intriguing creatures. Now I have a discovery that I'd like to mention to you, and uh, this is the first time this discovery has ever been mentioned publicly. Dr. Jaime Guterres and I were excavating uh, in Via de Leva in Colombia, South America, on property that Title Deed was held to, and simultaneously made the discovery of the rarest ammonite ever. I'll mention this briefly. Uh, because I'm publishing on this technically, I named him Pendulocerus laqueus corrugatum. What on earth am I talking about with a, a creature like this? Well, you'll notice above that shell, Ian, there's an actual membrane that's corrugated and was flexible. 
that membrane was composed of the same material as the hood. Part of the hood was there, the intelligent thinking and head structure of this creature. Now, the siphuncle is just barely uh, obvious. Yours are much better. That's the reason I was so delighted. Now, here's why I called him Pendulocerus laqueus corrugatum, which means the ammonite, and these, these are subclassifications of this ammonite, that had a sail that spread like lace and propelled himself with this little knob. This pendula, I had to name that because previously no uh, ammonite had been found. With that little knob, he was able to propel himself. It was pliable with that lever or lever air. And thus he is called Pendulocerus because of the pendulum. His corrugated fin, no other ammonite, to, at least in the literature, has been found with such a fin, with such a sail. That was a major discovery. Yes, it was. And I'm excited about that. <laughs> but I'm much more excited about this discovery. We've talked about creation versus evolution. We've talked about the fact that the evidence is that just like the biblical record describes, this entire Grand Canyon was very rapid in its sediment and in the water carving through it to expose it later. All of these fossils were deposited very rapidly in a living context. That's a major discovery that points to creation. Now you can make a major discovery. You can meet the Creator in person. Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago, walked our streets. He was the physical expression of God. He died, was buried, and rose again. Right now, would you pray this prayer? Lord Jesus, right now I open my heart to you. Step into my heart and live. Cover me with your blood, save me forever, and I'll serve you with all my heart. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Information like you've received today is available at the Creation Evidence Museum. In printed form, in videos, we even have a coloring book for the kids. Just call or write us at Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, area code 254-897-3200, or check us out on the web, creationevidence.org.